take responsibility for yourself. Exercise your self-motivation and self-determination. Practice free enterprise in your holistic home office. Avoid selfish ambition, which is the dark side of human nature. Read all the stories on this website and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. Okay, here we go again. Here, we'll try this again. This is like the third time I've tried to record this, so I'm still pretty clumsy about it. I'm just uh, making videos. Uh, what I'm trying to do is kind of get the videos a little bit more refined than they have been so far. I'm uh, I'll get that down there like that, trying to keep that lamp out of the picture. And, uh, you know, I got my simple screen recording. Hopefully it's working this time, because last time it didn't, uh, uh, at least it didn't save the recording. But I don't know what happened to it, but it was I couldn't find it. So I'm going to make this one more time and see what happens. You know, here's my panel down here that I can, you, whatever, this is the first thing I set up when I install Linux. I edit the panel and get it set to the right, up, you know, this length here, width, I guess I should say. And then I set this up. You can go over here to your application menu, and if you right click on it, it'll show you some, you can look at some alternatives and configure the application menu and edit the panel and all that. And then you got this. Now this setting, this color scheme, I set, I did a lot of work to get this to look like this. This isn't your, you know, default Lin, uh, KDE. You know, I had to work pretty hard to get that set up like that. But you can do it. You know, you get it. The way you do it is you get in here, system settings, and you can set up your look and your colors and your theme and in your window, you know, a lot of different settings in here. You set up your uh, shortcuts, you know, and set up your custom shortcuts, your all different kinds of things, power management, input devices, set your little mouse pad the way you want it and to work the way you want it, set your uh, single click to op open your files. You know, I do a lot of work in here, colors, you can go in here and click on this and, and edit it. You, typically when you save it, you, you save a copy. So you have the original and then you have a copy of the original with a different name. You know, like say, uh, I've got a bunch of them up here. Edna 2, Edna 3. Here's the original Edna and here's a couple other ones. You know, that I've copied, you know, that I've changed a few things to see if, to make it what I like. You know, and you know, and you just play around here, explore plasma style, application style, and, you know, spend, spend some time working in there. You know, the main thing, here's your little four workspaces. You got to set that up in it too. That's one of the things you set up in the settings. And, and, you, and the way I move is you just function. F, or no, you, it's uh, Control F2 gets you me to the second page, second workspace, and that's where I usually open Kitty, which is my my you know uh, what do I call that terminal, and then I hit it again, and that this is my old configuration. You know, typically I would use uh, Tmux. But since I'm having trouble getting Tmux to work, you know, I can get Tmux open here. Let's see, see what happens if I put it in here. See if it works. Okay, so, so you can see that bar down there. That's Tmux. Okay, working. Now let's uh, do, uh, if I go Control A. No, it's not working. I don't know why it doesn't work. I, I know it worked because I just tried to work, make it work, and it doesn't work. So anyway, this is the old way I used to do it. And I would use this one would be where I use Z shell, you know, to type commands like, say, for example, sudo apt update 
you know, and then you put in your, your, and then it does, and it does its thing, see, and it, it checks, I just updated it, so it shouldn't need any updates, all packages are up to date, and then I can go over here, and, uh, put, and I can say vim, dot vim rc, and these are my, two, your two most important tools, is, is C shell and vim. And then Vim, you can write and do all kinds of different things. You can, I typically I use my up and down arrow to move around, but you can also, the main, the, the Vim way of moving is I would type 42J to go down to line 42, or, which is actually line 43. I got an extra line up there I could get rid of, it, but anyway, it doesn't matter. You know, because it's all relative. That, that moves up and down, like right? so. You know, and uh, you can that way. You can, if I need to get up to the top, to the top of that section, I can just go one twelve. You know, twelve k. Because H J K L are your movement keys. So you, if I wanted to go over to say bundle, I could say five L. And then it's actually seven, but whatever, you know. And I had to do some work to get that line to, to show up as a line instead of a square. I'm pretty sure the line that's doing that, it might be, that, that line's probably in the Z shell line, but uh, it's down here. I, I think the one that does that is this one right here. Line 108 allows cursor change in Tmux mode. I, I'm pretty sure that's the line that allow, makes that. Okay. And then uh, another really inner, important little time saving thing I do is this right here is a uh, map. I mapped because when in order to, to change, you, you press escape. When you one of the very first things you do is you switch escape and cap locks keys, and you can do that in there's there's commands you can use to set it up in Z shell and, and set it up that you can do. But in KDE, you can go into settings, you know, the little settings deal I showed you this one over here, and go into here. And this is like one of the most important settings, you know, and you go. Where do you go into that? Um, keyboard. Input devices. Adva keyboard advanced. Caps lock behavior. You click on that and this one right here. Swap, escape, and caps lock. That's how you do it in this one. And then that way whenever you want to get like say if you go if you set if you press i you're in insert mode and you can type insert mode there okay but you can also in order to get back into the regular mode you press escape and now you're in instead of uh you know you would be able to move around stuff like that and you you would be so you, you know if you press backscape you're, you're just moving backwards in insert mode if you press backspace you're you're actually typing information so and the silic in order to get out of k or just get into command mode the the uh, the command is colon which is a you know shift and in the key, and so what this is doing is just changing it to where I all I have to do is press semicolon. Oops, I mean escape mode. Well, hope I didn't mess anything up there. Caps lock and press semicolon puts me down there in the command mode line. And there I can press, I can write commands. And I can just quit. 
it's going to ask me, I think, do I want to save changes? I'm going to say no. I don't want to say it because I didn't, oh, I was just kind of piddling around in there. But that gets me out here, see? And, and like Vim RC is, I haven't uh, changed anything in there. So anyway, and then you can just exit out of there. That's exited out of Tmux, exit out of Vim, exit out of Vim, or Z Shell. So that's that's the way to do it. You know, that's how you get in there, and you know, you can edit all your files in in uh, Linux. That's how you you configure all your applications to look and act the way you want them to. And then um, the 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 next thing is. Uh, this right here is a uh, Crusader. It's my file manager, graphical file manager. You know, Z Shell you, is, has it's just its own file manager. But this one here is where you, I can look. I can dr drag and drop files from one side to the other, which makes it easy to move files around and organize your files. There's Kate, which is my primary writing. T tool I use Kate to write most of my I do most of my writing in Kate, even though it's mainly it's for writing code you know computer code. It's a full fully featured code editor just like VS Code or anything like that. I mean it's probably not as fancy as VS Code or anything like that, but you know, and uh, but and so. I, if, you know, the one I was trying, try, I'm working on a lot lately is KBN Live, which takes quite a while to start, but I'll start it anyway, show you that. Hopefully this is recording. The last time it didn't record and that just really, anyway, this is Crusader. You basically, you just, you can just gra drag these and drop them in here. And then you can you drag them from here into here and here is your if you bring this back over here it'll be playing right here and you can just set it up here and it'll and you can dip different things you can add different little like some text you can put a title thing up here and it'll be part of the page you can make one one a full page video down here and a small little square of a video on this line and, and it'll so you can play them both at the same time and uh which i'll demonstrate in this video and uh anyway that that's kdn live it's it's kind of a fun complicated puzzle oh, and another thing is you got to get in the habit of not clo not xing out of these programs you got to go over here because KDN Live is the one that kind of taught me that the hard way. See, I just locked it up again. All right, so there's that. You know, KDN Live. It's kind of a little touchy. It's a big, huge program. That's you know, it's all, and you got to do it right. And if you do it right, it'll work fine. Inkscape is another one that I use. Graphics. This is Inkscape. You know. I use this, and you can adjust these colors. I, you know, this is my first time I've ever used a dark theme like this. I typically keep it a, a, the normal light theme, and you can just you kind of I, I can't, I can't even remember how to get this thing set to to where it's along. And you got a whole bunch of settings over here that you can do and use all these and. Save document, print document. You know, you got all this. You got a ton of different things you can do. These these ones right here. This one right here is the one where you control, grab things with this, and you make squares with this, and things like that. Getting in the habit of using this. I got to stop using that. Uh, the first time it's ever really caused any issue is with KDN Live. You don't want to X out of KDN Live. It causes problems. So you got to use quit. 
another another real cool uh, graphic tool, which is very similar to uh, Inkscape, but it's Krita. It's more of a painting tool. And I've seen uh, the first time I ever saw him, I saw a video about this, and some guy was making a, just an absolutely amazingly beautiful picture of a person, and it was. It was, they, they made like a cartoon that looked like a real person. It was so detailed. You know, and you can you set this up. And, you, you know, and it's the same thing. It's just another, but this is more of a drawing tool. And I'll get, you know, later on I'll make videos for each one of these. And once I, because I'm still learning, I got to learn how to do it first before I can tell you how to do it. You know what I mean? Here, we can get out of this. We don't need this on this page anymore. And um, another good tool is I use LibreOffice a little bit. The one that I really want to do some work with on in LibreOffice is uh, this one right here. And I don't know, you know, I'm kind of having a debate whether I want to use LibreOffice or OpenOffice because I noticed that OpenOffice is back. It's under the, uh, um, it, it's back under, uh, see, this for one thing, LibreOffice, I don't know. It's so hard to get LibreOffice to match my the colors of the scheme. You know, anyway, learn how to make spreadsheets and this is because of it's your business you know you want to make your record make, keep accurate records of your business and this is one of the tools that you can use to do that let me see something here i wonder what my other alternative i have another alternative i can use for this LibreOffice. i wonder what that one looks like i think i had it looking pretty good let me see, Office, Caligra, Sheets. Um, just blank worksheet, let's do that, use that template. See, and it's, this is the same thing, it's just a different version of it. You know, and it's got, it's rearranged. You know, I, this could use some definite editing because there's a lot of wasted space, and I don't like that, you know. I don't know. This might be, yeah, this is some sort of a interface. But anyway, learn how to use these tools. These are the tools. You would use either LibreOffice, Calc, or Caligra Sheets to create your work on your database. Ultimately, probably what you want to do is use my Postgres SQL, you know, in Z shell, you know, Z shell, and keep your database in there. Because see, here's one of the my favorite tools. And there I go, clicking that X button. That I've always liked, liked, but it doesn't. It's not very console. I don't want that. Do I even have that? I'm sure I have it installed. Here it is. Contact. Oh, I, got, I still have that down here. Well, that's strange. Contact. This one needs work on it. I wish that uh, somebody would uh, get in here and do some work and get this thing working because I don't like anything to do with uh, Firefox or Thunderbird, you know, that company. They said they were going to start censoring their search engine. And, you know, I, okay, I guess I'll have to use a different one. But anyway, I've always wanted this program to work really good. And and I've had it working really good, but I, I messed it up when I installed, was setting all this stuff up. I messed up the database and now I can't find the database and I don't know how to fix it but you know so I just use the online version I don't really need it it's not absolutely something I absolutely need but basically what it has is it has your mail your contacts your calendar to-do list feeds journal pop-up notes it's like a central 
personal information management service is not running well. Well, that, that's kind of the program that this uses on the background, a Kanadi. And, but you use this, you know, for your email, you know, and you can have multiple email accounts in here. And uh, I wish you, we could get that working better. Next time I install Linux, I'll make sure I don't mess it up. You know, it's a, cause I use, I usually use it. You know, I've been bouncing back and forth between Thunderbird and Contact and Ocular. Ocular is another, you know, you really don't need to know not anything about it, but it's just, it's your reading. You can read things, you know, uh, PDFs, your, your eBooks and stuff like that in here. And uh, for your development, I got K Develop in here. And that's kind of the main one for it. the the other one that goes for with KDE is uh, it's called uh, it's the Cute Cute Creator. You know. There's, there's Simple Screen Recorder and KDNY. There's a Elisa. They used to have a really good audio program, but apparently some company bought it out and they're, they're recording everybody's private information. So I don't want to use that. You know, Calligra, I got two different office suites in here, LibreOffice and Calligra. And I've recently found out that OpenOffice is in, they work, it's working, for, it's now been returned to, uh, you know, I can't remember who's using, doing it, but there's some pretty good company is uh, take care of that. It's not a big private company anymore. It's not in part of, uh, you know, Oracle. It's not part of Oracle anymore. They gave it away. This is a uh, Falcon, which is the KDE browser it works pretty good. It's it's just uh, you know it's very basic. There's not a lot to it. It's new for one thing, so they haven't had a chance to do much with it. But eventually, I always use DuckDuckGo by the way because I don't like Google. There's some other stuff I like. What the, is this? I don't know what that's all about. Revolver. I like to watch Revolver. You know, they got good stories in Revolver. This is Falcon, running Falcon. Okay. You know, so you can do that. It doesn't seem to be going very fast right now. Wow, that's weird. The color on that. What's that? Oh, it's because it's got some transparency. That's kind of odd. Which, you know, I don't really like. That's not. Very good, but it's uh, beautiful. The whole thing is see normally. This is the one, my main. I used to center for the same reason. You know, it's like they don't record every what I'm searching for and, st and stuff like that. Business. So I'm just making videos for you. You know, to try to introduce people to Linux and let you know that this is, it's just, it's, it's better in my opinion. The main advantage that Linux has over Windows and Apple Macintosh is that it's, you get to be the artist. You are in control all the way down to the, to the hardware. The, the, you know, it's like when I'm using Windows and I have a Windows, I'm making, I may use, my Windows machine to do most of this work right now just because of the circumstances I'm in. I, I'm using Windows. It's really obvious that Windows is in control. And that kind of, you know, after using Linux for years, it's like really super obvious that Windows is in control because I'm so used to being in control of the computer. And um, so I recommend people use Linux because that's part of being free enterprise, you know, free enterprise is being self-control and self-determination. And, um, you know, you don't want you to use your computer to, 
you you want to use your computer for you to create something valuable, unique, and, and you know nobody else ever thought of, and things like that. And so I recommend using Linux to do that, to get free from that corporate, you know, that military industrial complex, you know, the, I call it the imperial pyramid, you know, the social hierarchy that people, you know, they want to do that. And I'm going like that social hierarchy is not sustainable. That's why civilizations always end because they start out and everybody's working together and then you get these bullies that want to be in control and they, they, they ruin it for everybody. Plus the main, I think the main reason, you know, is the kids, they get complacent because they inherit a civilization from their parents, you know, their ancestors, and they didn't have to work very hard to get it. And they think they're entitled to it and they get lazy and the whole thing just falls apart because it takes a lot of work to create a civilization. But I, to, in order to, I think that free and open source software is, is one little piece of the puzzle to where we can create a sustainable global civilization. And it has to be global. You know, you can't have be free, one part of the world be free and other parts not free, you know, and let the totalitarianism and corruption and all kinds of things like that fester anywhere in the world. The whole world has to be free. And that's just the way it's going to have to be because it's, you know, every time we think we can just relax and not have to be on guard against some totalitarian people that want to control everything, you know, somebody it comes from somewhere, you know, we get, you know, anyway, I don't want to get into that stuff, but, you know, I just, the one thing I don't like is bullies. I, I love the human race. I, I, I want every race and tribe and religion to prosper. I want the whole world to be one uni universal and divine civilization. You know, God makes the rules, you know, follow the rules God makes and live long and prosper. You know, that's what I recommend. And it's fun, you know, life on earth is an adventure and I totally, I'm having fun. You know, I'm a happy camper. So thanks for watching. And uh, I, do, I do, one last thing before I go is I, I like these little, my, home, my book is for sale and I recommend you buy the book and read it. It's a good story. I got donate here if you think that helping people do learn about how to use Linux and computers and home office and build a profitable home office is a good idea I appreciate any donations I was uh, what was I looking at earlier about something anyway it's just I'll, I'll you know there's gonna be more videos coming but uh, yeah, watch this. Uh, oh, I remember what it was. I was going through this a little bit and t and kind of showing you how I, each one of these sections has a bunch of stories under them. These are the stories, this third tier. This is the first tier. This is the second tier. This is the third tier. The third tier is where the stories are. This is mostly, there's some stories in the second tier, but mostly it's just lists of other stories. You know, and uh, this this one right here, Homo Spice Hypothesis, is a, is a story. One, it's like a book I wrote, and this is the only place that it's available. It's not. I didn't publish this book. This well, I I published it right here. This is it right here, and you know, and it's an epic story about human nature and civilization. And so, thanks for watching, and. Uh, You know, read the stories and watch the videos and you'll you'll learn a lot. It's a very high performance, advanced, entertaining education. Thanks.